I suppose Jesus could have gone on a last minute healing crusade, but he chose to spend his last day with those closest to him, around a table over a meal, which we now call the Last Supper, and where Jesus took the bread and the wine and said those words that we so often repeat at communion services. Have you ever tried to organise a dinner party that didn't quite go to plan? Well, we read in Luke 22 that this one didn't go very well, to start with at least. The room had been prepared by Peter and John and everything was there, including the water and a cloth for washing their feet. But there was no servant there to do it for them. So the meal started and all of them were reclined at the table with their dirty, smelly feet on show. No one offered to do it. Now I'm sure that any of them would have been happy to wash the feet of Jesus. But that would mean that they'd have to wash everyone else's as well. And no one wanted to be seen as being inferior to anyone else. We read that they were even busy arguing amongst themselves as to who was the greatest. In verse 3 we read that Jesus knew that these were his last hours and that God had given him power over all things. And it's from this position of power and authority that he took off his outer clothing and began to wash their feet. Jesus taught them by his actions before words. He acted out a living parable, a message in picture form that the disciples would never forget. Their teacher and their Lord, doing the job of the lowest servant. He washed their feet as an act of love for them all, even though he knew that one of them was going to betray him that night and the other deny him within hours. I wonder what they thought at the time. Shame that they hadn't done it. I can imagine the conversation coming to a halt and a very embarrassed silence falling. Certainly they would have been very uncomfortable. Peter certainly was, and we can see that in his response. First his refusal to let Jesus do that for him, and then, well, do all of me. Typical Peter, all or nothing. Why did he not want Jesus to wash his feet? Why did he feel it was better for Jesus to wash all of him the second time? Why could he not accept the service that Jesus was offering? Was it pride? Sometimes pride or false humility stops us from gracefully receiving service from others. By the time he'd finished, I'm sure they were ashamed of their argument of which one of them was the greatest. And they'd be a lot more subdued, wondering what Jesus was going to say next. Once he's finished, Jesus sits back down and as he often did with parables, he then explains what he's trying to teach them through this. He asks them if they've understood what he's just done, under what went through their minds. We know they weren't always the quickest to catch on. He tells the disciples to wash one another's feet. I wonder if they meant, does he mean that literally? Are we supposed to do this every time we sit down and eat? Jesus then explains that they shall love and serve one another as he has loved them. Humbly, sacrificially, completely, without favour. Not thinking of themselves as better than anyone else. You remember he went to the cross shortly after this and gave his life for them and for us, showing the full extent of his love. He then gives them a new commandment. Now the Greek word for new here means freshness, the opposite of being outworn, rather than new as in something different. The command to love was not new, but the extent of which we are to love certainly was. To love each other as Jesus has loved us. 
Loving our neighbour as ourselves is important, but loving our fellow Christians should be even more so. Jesus emphasises this by later repeating it in John 15 verse 12. This should be a characteristic of his followers, that they are identified by the love that they have for each other. Paul recognised the importance of this message and he stresses this in his prayer for the church in Thessalonica, praying that their love for each other would increase and overflow. The love between brothers and sisters in Christ should be a powerful witness. It was recorded by Tertullian over a hundred years later than this event that non-believers used to say of Christians, see how they love one another. As I've been looking at this chapter, it's brought a few questions to my mind. What does it mean to wash one another's feet for us in our daily lives? Jesus washed the feet of all the disciples do I choose who I serve and who I don't? Do I go to church to receive or to give? To serve or be served? And how do I react when someone wants to serve me?